Manfrotto made a big impression at NEB 2010 with their 504 HD fluid head. Today we're going to discuss whether this lived up to the hype. This is Next Wave TV. This episode is made possible by CPM Film Tools, your lightweight solution for caging the beast. LCD Viewfinder, the essential accessory for DSLR video. Lightcraft Workshop, the perfect tools to create the perfect image. Hi, my name is Tony Rialli from NextWaveDV.com, and today we're going to be talking about the Monfrotto 504 HD Fluid Head Tripod. Uh, like I said, this was announced at NEBA 2010, and it just, just came out, and uh, I decided to make the investment, and so I purchased this. And uh, I'm going to tell you whether I think it's worth the price. Um, Manfrotto beforehand, typically their, their tripods kind of ranged in the four or $500 range. Um, this tripod, the fluid head by itself is around $400. The sticks with the, these, this set of sticks, this is the 546B. Um, there are different ones you can get kitted together, but I decided to go with this one. Uh, together it was around $750. So it's a little higher price than their average tripod kits. Um, but let's talk about whether it's worth that price point. One of the first things that you're going to notice about this tripod is this hollow area, which they call their bridging technology. Uh, this makes a much larger base for your tripod uh, to sit on um, and for your devices to sit on. Uh, this provides a more stable head. It's, uh, and I've, I've discovered that it seems to be a very robust head. Um, and so far, it's, it's been working pretty well. Uh, I did run into some issues. If you uh, look really close, you can see some scratches on the fluid head. When um, I attached my rig that was on my previous head, which is the Davis and Sanford FM18, which was a lot smaller, um, the rig fit fine. But when I attached it on here, um, the first thing I did, I popped it on and it scratched the head because there were some screws that were, were lower down that didn't hit the uh, Davis and Sanford head, but they did hit, hit, hit this. So I had to redo my rig a little bit and it worked fine now, uh, but it was a little bit of an inconvenience to have to do that. Um, so overall, I'm finding that the head is working pretty good. The, um, there's the, the drag controls for both your pan and your tilt. You have your lockdowns for the tripod, which basically lock down your pan and your tilt. And uh, everything feels very solid with this. Uh, it looks great. It's a great looking tripod head. Everything feels solid. Another new factor with the tripod was their counterbalance system. And this allows for when you're using a rig that may not be properly balanced for you to throw off the weight a little bit uh, to create an even balance for your tripod. Uh, for a rig of this size, it doesn't honestly work that well. Fortunately, this rig is fairly balanced. But if you were to take away a few of these factors, maybe not have the battery pack um, or maybe not have a cage system, a little lighter weight of a rig um, with a, you know, perhaps more weight on the back or something like that, I did find that with some other rig systems that I was using that the counterbalance system did work and did allow you to have uh, more balance without having to literally reposition everything on the, the tripod head. Uh, obviously, we have the standard arm right here. And uh, it does actually extend out quite far, which is really nice if you need to get further away from your tripod. Um, everything feels very solid on the Manfrotto head. Like I said before, all these knobs, they feel solid. Um, they don't feel cheap, uh, which is something that's really impressed me. A lot of the other Manfrotto heads that I've looked at, uh, for example, the 501 I have over here, um, it just it didn't feel very strong. Honestly, this head is more expensive than the Davis and Sanford. Uh, FM18 uh, head that I used before, but honestly, I like the Davis and Sanford better. It just felt better. Um, so this, the 501 and, and the 503, the other heads just didn't impress me. So I really kind of took a chance on the 504, and um, so far I'm really am liking it. Um, the there are a couple of issues that I have with it. Uh, Monfrotto sticks, they're great. They have a lot of features, but they have a tendency every once in a while to loosen and uh, you have to constantly be retightening them. Not a big deal, but if you put too much weight on it and it slides down during a shoot, that could ruin a shot. Um, so I'm constantly finding myself making sure everything is nice and tight. Um, the ball head is only 75 millimeter, which it would have been nice if it was 100 millimeter, which is a little more standard. Um, not a huge issue because if you're using 100 millimeter, you can just use a, a 75 to 100 millimeter adapter. But again, 
Um, just kind of small, but it still feels robust. One nice feature is this lighted bubble leveler. I'm actually liking that quite a bit because it doesn't matter if it's dark or light, I can easily see where the level is and I can quickly adjust it. The 546B sticks, I'm actually am liking, aside from them being loose every once in a while, um, they do have the ability to, to go into low mode, which is really, really nice. You don't have to get a floor spreader for that. You can use these existing tripod and loosen them up and be able to go super low, which is really nice. Um, and they feel very solid. I mean, they aren't carbon fiber, they are aluminum, but they do feel solid. Everything feels good about this tripod. The tripod head overall looks really nice. Um, now that shouldn't be the main issue, but it just, it looks professional, it feels professional. Um, the price tag is, I think, a good price tag for this. It's, it's a good deal. Um, I've had some professional DPs that own dozens of head, O'Connors, um, Satchelers, uh, lots of professional heads, and they were impressed by this tripod. For the price point, I think it's good. Now, yes, you could spend a couple thousand dollars for an O'Connor head and get a much better head, but frankly, um, you're going to find that I think that this is a good value. If you're expecting this head, though, to be the perfect head, you are going to notice some issues. Like, for example, um, I'll do a release on this head, and I'm going to tip it forward, and it's, uh, it's actually working pretty good right now. I'm actually impressed, but okay, like here, it is a little back heavy and it won't stay there. Um, sometimes it does the same thing when I'm tipping it forward too, if it's not quite as loose. But um, d depending on the weight of the rig, this is probably towards the higher end of your weight limit. It says it's a 16 and a half pound weight. Um, so this, is, this rig is towards that higher end of that. Um, you, you may not expect it to just you tip it forward and expect it just to always stay there. This is actually, it's actually working pretty good right now. I'm impressed. Um, but if you have like a higher shot and you see that tipping, just keep your hand on the tripod head or on the, the handle and you should be able to get perfectly fine shots. I'm not finding that the weight is so overbearing that I can't be stable, um, that if I just stay with it and I keep my hand on there, uh, it works pretty good. I don't find any bounce back with it. Uh, when I'm shooting, I find that I can easily uh, pan or tilt to a specific position and it's smooth. Uh, nothing is um, bouncing or having resistance that causes me to have um, unpleasant shots. And uh, I've tried this on dolly and I've tried this on several shots and I found that it was, it was very useful. We did a, a dolly shot here that I'll show you. Just testing out the tripod and uh, we're just doing a normal floor dolly. And uh, we were just testing out, I was actually operating camera and pulling focus at the same time. So I may have gone sh soft a couple of times, but overall I was finding that uh, I was able to get smooth shots while paying attention to focus, while doing everything else. Uh, and I had somebody else pushing the cart dolly. Uh, so overall, I've been very impressed with this tripod. I think it's, it's pretty good. It looks great. Um, it performs well. I think it's worth that, that price point that it's offered. Um, you know, if it was uh, maybe $500 to $1,000 more, I might uh, steer myself away from it. But at this price point, I think it's a good value. Well, I hope that helps you in choosing tripods to see if this is an option that you might be interested in looking at. Uh, be sure to check out our other episodes of Next Wave TV and our other training series. Uh, we're actually on location here at uh, the set for shooting HDSR1, HDSLR 101, and that's going to actually be coming out very soon. We just finished taping that, so tune in soon for that as we finish editing that up. Um, but also check out our new product line too. We've got our Next Wave tracks that we just announced, uh, which is great, inexpensive, royalty-free music. Um, you can check that out by going to our website, nextwavedv.com. Click on the product section and check out all the stuff that we have there. Um, and also make sure you subscribe. Uh, check out our Facebook page too, where we're gonna be posting a lot of uh, other video uh, pictures, lots of stuff that you won't find on our YouTube page. So check out our Facebook, which is facebook.nextwavedv.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.